Morning, folks. I'm Dave Canberra with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. I'm back up here at the wall tent, back in my comm area here where I'm working on some radio stuff. Haven't done a radio video for a little while, so I thought I'd do something today because I'm going to do an upgrade to my radio, which means I'm going to do a little work on the radio here on camera. There is an upgrade for the 705 that I want to talk to you about, and there's a reason that I'm doing it because it's not necessary for me, and I haven't done it for a while because it wasn't necessary, but now I'm finding it a necessity for off-grid communications. And let me explain that to you a little bit to kind of help you understand. When you are doing data type communications and you're sending a message, it is a message that goes out at a certain UTC time. And all those messages go out at the same interval UTC time-wise. So if your computer time doesn't match the UTC time in actuality, and it has to be close within less than less than a second is best. Less than two seconds, not so good. Right now, it's probably way worse than that. We're going to look at it in just a minute. And the reason for that is to be able to sync the computer off grid to UTC time, you have to use the GPS port inside the 705. But the 705 is only set up to be able to connect the GPS to the laptop by use of a cable. I can use ICOM utilities to run the radio from the laptop. I can run programs, change frequencies, all that kind of stuff through the radio. But I cannot sync the clock without a cable connection. If you have internet, you can do it over the internet very easily and keep it up to date. But that defeats the purpose of off-grid comms because you need the internet. With this type HF connection and setup for FT8, JSA call, Vera, things like that, you don't need any internet. But to make this work, you have to have the right time. So the only way to do that is to use the time sync with my GPS on my radio. And the only way to do that is with a cable. So now, let's look at something real quick on my radio. And I want to show you what I'm talking about with that time offset. Okay, what you can see is I just made a contact. Get this thing focused here. I just made a contact with a Whiskey India Kilo Echo. If you look over here in the time differential, you can see that a lot of those are over a second. He's at 1.4. Really, it's actually better than it normally is right now because if I don't sync this computer every couple days, it gets up in the 1.9 to 2 second range pretty quick. In which case, you're not going to make any contacts because there's too much time offset there. So what we want to do is we want to fix that time offset. And to do that, I'm going to need to change a component in my 705, which we're going to talk about in just a second. There's his 73. And there is another contact coming through from a Kilo Echo Oscar Mike. I'm sorry, Kilo Echo Zero Mike Sierra Juliet. So I'll go ahead and let that contact go ahead and go through so I can log it into QRZ. Then I'm going to shut this down. And we're going to look at this 705 and I'm going to show you the upgrade I'm going to make to hopefully get these numbers all in the 0.9 or less. All right, so here is my ICOM 705 and it's got a cage on it. I'm going to, to take off of it from Wind Camp. Pretty nice cage with a stand on it. I like it really well. It kind of protects the radio from getting beat up. And I'm not gentle on my gear, which is why I'm going to have to do this upgrade. So if you look at this radio, there is a USB port here for a cable. And you can see that the connection in there is gone. And it was a mini USB. And when I had that mini USB in there, I could connect the cable straight to my computer, USB to USB-C, and it was fine. However, through abuse and neglect and not taking care of my gear real well and being pretty rough on in the field, I have destroyed that connection. However, there is a company out there called Mineheart Solutions that makes an upgraded board for this 705. It's in this package here. We're going to cut it out of here so you can see it better. It's kind of reflective. That turns it into a USB-C connection instead of a micro usb and you just have to change out the board and put one connector in. There's no soldering involved or anything like that. It's pretty simple. Um, I watched the video of the guy who invented this or created this um, do an install. And it looked pretty easy to me, so I thought I'd do it on computer for you guys. I thought I would do it on film for you guys today 
because it looked pretty simple and hopefully I won't screw it up. We'll figure that out when it's all said and done here and see if we make an improvement or if we make a mess. However, let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave this in the package for a moment, just set it over here in a tray so I don't lose anything. And I've got a set of mini tools out here and I'm gonna figure out how to get this cage back off here. I think it's just one bolt right here that holds this cage on. And then it should slide right out of the front of this cage. It's just right here, one Allen bolt that holds it on, I think, and there might be two here that have to come out. And then it should come out of the cage just fine, and we'll be able to get to it and take the radio apart. Put that guy right there. Big hands don't do very good with just a little bitty work, that's for sure. We'll see if we can do this without making a mess of it. Okay. Set this thing down like this so it doesn't fall out. Because it is going to be loose in there now. In that cage. No five slide right out of there. Okay. So we've removed our cage now and we're down to the nitty gritty of taking the 705 apart. That's the next step. I'm going to go ahead and take the battery out of it. Because it does have an external battery as well as a 12 volt connection. And it will only run on five watts if you run the battery. But it's the same battery that runs on my. ID51, it's exactly the same battery, or ID52, excuse me, the same battery for that. That makes it convenient, and it will charge, while it's hooked up to things, it will charge that external battery. But it will also work with 12 volts external, and that makes it run 10 watts. So, we've got that taken apart. Now we've got to take four screws out of here, 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 and here, and the face of this radio should come off pretty easy at that point. Okay, so we've got... A screw here, a screw here, and then four here on the sides we've got to take out. Get our smallest screwdriver bit we've got in this mess. And our finest point on it for this. Out of here. And again, I've got a tray over here to try to catch these. These first two aren't a big deal, getting them out. You've got to be a little careful with the last four because that's holding the face of the radio in place. Now, as I'm taking these front screws out, I'm going to go ahead and put a pad down here on this hard table just to kind of protect this thing. Like I said, I think there's a little bit of Loctite on these screws. When you first put that screwdriver in there, you really got to kind of bear down on a little bit to get that to come loose. Remember, once you get these four out, that face is going to be loose. And there's a couple ribbon cables in there that you don't want to rip out of there so you got to be careful separating that face okay that takes care of our screws now we should be able to just pry this off little by little here there we go and there's your ribbon cables right there and we're going to kind of set this sideways so we don't jack that up while we're working on this thing here. Now, this board here is the one we have to take out. And there's three screws there and there's a little ribbon connector right here. So we gotta take these three screws out to get this board out. And then we'll get that replacement board and we'll get that dude in. Little screws and big hands don't usually mix very well. I do have a pair, I do have a Leatherman over here. And if I had a magnetized screwdriver, that'd probably be even better. I'm not that fancy when it comes to working on electronic stuff and I don't do it that often. So I'm doing this because it didn't look too difficult. Common man stuff. If we can get her done. 
All right, now, that should be, have the board loose. So it must have busted off and fell inside the housing somewhere, but it was connected right here. So it's probably laying inside this housing someplace. I'll look for that in a minute. Now, you've got a little bitty connector right here that's so small, it's scary. And you've got to lift up on this tab with your fingernail to disconnect that. And it just falls out, just like that. It's so dainty, it's scary. All right, now, this new board, let me get a knife out of my pocket here real quick. I'll just cut the packaging on this dude. This new board, you can see the look of that. And it's got a USB-C connector on it here, okay? So it's going to go in the same way so that that USB-C connector sits just like this. And this ribbon cable has to go around the back side and go in this and then kind of wrap down inside like this. So this one's got a connector on it that's the opposite direction. So you lift on, on it from the opposite side. Slide that bad boy in, just like that. These are really, really dainty pieces and parts, man. You got big hands like I do. It's a scary thought. All right, now we got it closed again. Now we should be good, okay? It's a little bitty trap door right there that you gotta kind of flip up with your fingernail. It's on the opposite side and you slide that up inside and clamp it back down. And then this goes right back inside just like this the way it went before with this folded over. And then it's just a matter of putting it back together and hoping that she works. Yeah, I'm not over tightening anything as I go here. All right, so we got everything hooked back up and running again now. And you can see the USB cable right there, hooked to the side of the radio there. And now, because I'm running a program here that's a time sync program, and it's connected to the USB and running off of the GPS and the radio, that you can see that GPS signal there. You can see my times now are all well under a second. Some of them are down to 0.3 even. All right, and we're making contacts already as soon as we hooked it up. There's a 0.1 second right there. Much better time differential than what we had a minute ago. And now we're going to be able to make contacts a lot easier, a lot faster, and a lot better. And that is the key to this off-grid thing was having that cable. And so that's what I wanted to get repaired on my 705 by upgrading to that USB-C connector. All right, guys, listen, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School, and I appreciate you guys joining me out today for a quick radio series type video. I had an upgrade I wanted to do to it anyway, and I thought, you know what, might as well film it. The only guy I've seen do it on video was the guy who created this board, and I thought I might be able to make it a little more simplistic for guys that are just getting into radio, things like that. It's definitely a great upgrade to your 705, which I still believe is one of the best radios out there today as far as the versatility of that radio goes in an off-grid scenario. So, I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back to another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks. Thanks.